to know who he is, what is the purpose of his life, where is he going, and what is he expected to do in this world. A man who is committed to the notion of providing leadership to the world, whose fathers and parents have prayed that Rabbana Hablana min Azwajana Uzuriyatina Qurrata Ayunu Wajalna Bil Muttaqina Imama that O oh Allah make my wife, my spouses and my progeny a uh, <coughs> satisfaction of my eyes uh, and make all of us the leaders وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا make us the leaders of even the muttaqeen that is the best because Islam an Islamic school is committed to the notion of excellence. Uh, we are told in Allah يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you uh, for justice and along with justice ihsan. Ihsan means excellence. Excellence in all walks of life. As the famous hadith has said that the Muslim uh, is the one who exercises excellence in all, uh, in everything which he does. Even when he has to slaughter a sheep, uh, he makes sure that his razor blades are sharp. So excellence is part and parcel of an Islamic school's message uh, to its students. And uh, an Islamic school provides an opportunity to the, the uh, future leaders of America uh, to indeed prepare themselves as excellent leaders, as those who are committed to lead their communities and to lead their society. My brothers, after 9-11, the major challenge which we have faced is indeed the, the challenge of letting people in the U.S know us, who we are, what is the purpose of our endeavors, so that they recognize that we are not strangers. We are those who are committed uh, to a particular ideology, but that ideology calls for, uh, for peace and harmony. So the question is how best can we represent ourselves? And how best can we indeed be able to uh, tell the American public in general who we are? That task can only be done by the graduates of an Islamic school. Because these are, the, these are the students and these will be the students who will become the leaders of future leaders with full knowledge of the, what is called the so-called secular education. Uh, inshallah, they will be the best uh, doctors and physicians and engineers. And at the same time, they will be the best Muslims. They will be the most knowledgeable Muslims. Not the Muslims like you and me, who went to uh, so-called so Muslim schools and we never got anything out of those Islamic studies courses, uh, barely minimal knowledge about Islam. But here the effort is that whatever they are studying, integrated curriculum, whatever they are studying, they study in, in this perspective of Islam. They know what Islam has to say about uh, political affairs, economic affairs, social affairs, community affairs, family life, so on and so forth. So they will be most knowledgeable people to talk about Islam, to represent Islam, to lead us as a community in front of the, uh, of the American society and inshallah become the leaders of America themselves. So it is uh, this model of an Islamic school which we are attempting to provide where the most important role is played by the Islamic environment which we try to establish 
in the Islamic school. An environment which is full of, which is permeated by the fragrance of peace, salam, Islamic brotherhood, and Islamic sisterhood, Islamic morals, Islamic etiquette, Islamic manners. That is the environment in which this child will grow. And inshallah, if he grows in that kind of environment, then with the support of the parents, uh, also, inshallah, he'll be the one who will stand firm on Islam. He will be the one who cannot be shortchanged to his commitment to Islam. And he will be the one who will lead Muslims to the right path and to the right track. That's the kind of individual we are all looking for. And not only a full-time Islamic school can indeed do their job. Wa Dawana and Alhamdulillah. Uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, uh, Sister Sadia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Firstly, Jazakallah Khair, Brother Nabil and Tarbiya Committee for arranging this beautiful, beneficial event for the community. It's a privilege and uh, humbling experience to be among all the leaders and scholars. Um, in my brief presentation, I will be covering three major points. Number one, how we can identify the leaders, future leaders among our kids in the community and among our children. Number two, I'll be shedding some light on the fact where we as parents sometimes become a barrier for our kids to be future leaders. And number three, I will introduce a formula that I have recently learned from um, successful business leaders um, that can teach to our kids to facilitate them when they grow up and uh, when it will be their time to choose a career path for themselves. Um, the first slide. Okay, um, so who are the leaders among our kids? If you look uh, to the group of children when they play together, we will see for sure that there is one child who's leading the course of the games and changing the rules of the games or changing the course of the games like he or she will say, let's play hide and seek now, or let's run together, let's climb the tree. And the rest of the kids will follow that child. And uh, that child who is uh, leading the games will have the attitude like, follow me, and uh, let's do this or that. Uh, so this is the characteristic of a leader. And uh, as parents and community members, we should encourage that and not to ridicule that bossy attitude. Also, if we look into the group closely while they play, there will be another child who is uh, uh, probably showing the care for the rest of the group. If a child falls behind while running, he or she will make sure to uh, integrate that child, bring that child back to the team. So that is also another kind of leadership. So what I saw and learned there's two kinds of leadership or leaders. One is from the front with the attitude of follow me. And then another leader is from the back who, can, who is more caring. And like when they grow up, they will be like conducting shura to uh, decide a matter and bring the harmony, bring the people or I mean, if it's kids, they bring the kids together uh, towards the game. So for for us as parents and community members, we need to take care of these both types of leaders and encourage them to have those characteristics and not just uh, shut them off. So the next point that I'm going to talk about is sometimes we as parents, and it's like not sometimes, uh, more often, uh, we make some very discouraging comments to our kids when they grow up like this. And that is, that acts as a barrier for them to su succeed 
or whatever they do because they don't get to be what they want to be. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, each one of us, specific skills, blessed us with the unique qualities. And oftentimes we fail to identify those qualities. And we end up choosing a career or whatever we do that we don't do best, sometimes we don't even like best. And at the end of the day we say, I don't like my job. I don't, I don't want to be doing, I mean, I don't want to continue this and I want to switch. So that is because we fail to identify those gifts in us. And the worst that we can do is to decide for our children to follow the same course. So what I found uh, and realized that, number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us special skills and gifts. Number two, Allah is the one who puts in our heart a uh, passion or interest for something. And number three, Allah is the one who provides from His bounties. If we can bring three things together and uh, utilize all these uh, unique skills and believe in Allah's barakah and put talkul in Allah and do what we do best or like best, then surely, inshallah, there is a good possibility we can bring leaders among ourselves. And uh, we, if we teach them to our kids, then inshallah, we can fi find more and more leaders in future. So there is a formula that I have recently learned from successful business leaders. Uh, and I named it three in one success formula. So if our ch kids, when they grow up and it, it's time for them to decide a career for themselves, no matter what it is, there has to be three key ingredients. Number one, it has to be a benefit. And benefit not only for himself or herself or the family, but it has to be beneficial for the society, for the community, and for, for the entire ummah. And number two, it has to have fun. Because a child, I mean, when they grow up, I mean, if we don't lie, if we don't uh, have passion for what we do, we cannot go so far. It will be stalled after a certain point of time. And number three, profitability. There has to be a way to uh, have sustenance from within that same thing. Otherwise, uh, the focus will be in multiple places. And that way we cannot expect leaders uh, in the work. So uh, obviously we need to communicate the, uh, the fact that be the best. Whatever you do, be the best. And be a leader, not a follower. Now. People can say that if everybody uh, is a leader, who will work or who will follow, but that's uh, not what I meant here. If you communicate them to be a leader, they will be leaders in certain things, whatever they, they have passion for. But not necessarily they will be leaders for everything. So a doctor is a, can be a leader in, uh, in his subject areas, but he's not the leader in all the other areas. So whatever we do best, just communicate our kids uh, to bring the best out of them. and among our ch children is first and foremost uh, teach them to do istikhara and for ourselves also do istikhara the first and foremost and then follow your heart because once we do istikhara it's a divine GPS we cannot go wrong with it because Allah will be in control of our heart after doing istikhara so don't, don't worry about following the heart and then put the complete relaxation